Hello guys, welcome to MBBS Meet Easy. And our topic today is GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So, GERD is defined as a reflux of gastric content in lower esophagus. Note, reflux is different from regurgitation. In order to understand this, see, in this diagram, the stomach content go up into the esophagus. So, this process is called as reflux. While in this diagram, the esophageal content go into the trachea. So, this process is called as regurgitation. Basically, in our esophagus, there is a lower esophageal sphincter. And what happens in GERD is, there is an increased relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter. Due to this relaxation, there is increased upward movement of stomach content into the esophagus. Now, let's discuss the risk factor. Number one risk factor is sliding hiatal hernia. What happened in sliding hiatal hernia? See, this is normal gastroesophageal junction, which is a junction between esophagus and stomach. What happened in sliding hiatal hernia is this gastroesophageal junction move up, slightly up. Now, let's compare in this diagram. The gastroesophageal junction is down, but in this diagram, the gastroesophageal junction is up. Hence, due to the upward displacement of gastroesophageal junction, in sliding hiatal hernia, GERD occur. Sliding hiatal hernia mainly seen in elderly people. Number two risk factor which cause GERD is delayed esophageal clearance, which is mainly seen in esophagitis. Number three risk factor is delayed gastric emptying. If your stomach is filled with food, it may cause upward movement of food from the stomach into the esophagus and hence GERD. Number four risk factor is increase in intraabdominal pressure. This is mainly seen in pregnancy. Number five risk factor is hypothyroidism. Basically, hypothyroidism cause weight gain and this weight gain cause increase in intraabdominal pressure and hence GERD. <coughs> Other risk factors include diets such as coffee, which cause increased lower esophageal sphincter relaxation and hence GERD. Now let's discuss signs and symptoms of GERD. Heartburn, the person may experience burning in the heart. Number two, the person may experience chest pain. The person may also experience chronic cough and asthma. The cause behind this chronic cough and asthma is acid regurgitation into the trachea. Number five, hoarseness of voice. It is due to laryngitis caused by acid. Number six is water brush. Water brush is basically excessive salivation caused by acid. Now, let's discuss the investigation in GERD. Number one, most initial investigation to be done in GERD is proton pump inhibitor trial. This is the most initial. The second investigation, which is considered as an investigation of choice, is endoscopy. The third investigation, which is considered as most accurate or Gold standard is 24-hour pH monitoring. In this 24-hour pH monitoring, pH of less than 4 is considered diagnostic of GERD. Now, let's discuss the treatment option available for GERD. First of all, give antacid trial to the patient. If the patient shows the signs of improvement, go for proton pump inhibitor at full dose. Basically, this is the treatment of choice that is PPI at full dose and the names are omeprazole and esmoprazole. If the patient show good result, go for PPI at maintenance dose. But if the patient not showing good result, go for surgical procedure that is fundoplication. In this fundoplication, you have to sew the stomach with esophagus so that GERD will not occur. But the side effect of this surgery is Gas blot syndrome in which the person is unable to belch. 
सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट गड थैंक यू